This is Nokia Research Centre in Cambridge. Here we're looking at what nanotechnology can do for current mobile devices and what future mobile devices nanotech can enable. Uh, nanomaterials are basically very small things that we think are going to have a big impact on uh, mobile devices. So in terms of enhancing existing capabilities, but then also enabling totally new capabilities and new form factors. So let's start with hydrophobic surfaces. So I think most of us are probably familiar with what a hydrophobic surface is. So if you've got a, a Teflon coated uh, frying pan at home, so you know that water really doesn't want to stick to a hydrophobic surface. Okay, so what we've got here is a little demo that's going to show you the difference between a, a regular hydrophobic surface and a super hydrophobic surface. So if we think about what water does on a, an uncoated surface, for instance, like the, the edge of the, uh, the holder here, so it basically just wants to spread around on there. So now if we try it on the, on the steel, so this has been coated with a low energy material. So now the, the liquid really doesn't want to wet it, it kind of beads up like that and it will slide around. So this is just kind of a bit of fun so we can make a, a marble maze using these materials. So the next thing I'm going to show you then is now we add some nanostructure to that same surface. So this is exactly the same except now we've got some very fine nanostructures on top of it. So now if I put the water on here it behaves much differently so it's much more mobile. So it's really difficult to control it's much harder to solve the maze. So basically what's happening here is that the uh, nanostructures are trapping a thin layer of air and the uh, water is basically just sitting on that air layer and it's making it very, very mobile, so it's almost just like a, like a liquid marble. And why, why might you be interested in that in terms of a mobile device? Well, if we can put that over the electronics, for instance, then we've got a good chance that next time you drop it in the sink or in the bath, there's a good chance that it'll survive because the water's not going to get to the sensitive electronics. What we have here is a demo that's going to show you some of these nanotechnologies. So we've got a phone, so the Lumia 710 here is coated with uh, one of these super hydrophobic surfaces. So it's got a nanostructured surface on there. What we're going to do is we're going to drop some water on the phone. It's going to bounce off. Underneath the phone here, there's a transparent sensor. So this has got a single atomic layer of carbon on there, so it's got a patterned graphene layer that's been made into a capacitive sensor. So that's going to detect the droplet impact and trigger the high-speed camera here sitting behind it. OK, so let's take a look at what happened when that drop impacted the superhydrophobic surface. So here's the slow-mo movie. So you get a bit of inertial spread initially and then the surface tension pulls it back in. So if you do that on a regular surface on the movie here, you can see basically you, the, the droplet would just stick to the surface. It's much less mobile, so in this case the thing's just, all the, pretty much all the water's bounced off on impact. It's not something new at all, no, I mean, uh, as ever, nature has already figured out these things. It's worked out millions of years ago through evolution that you can, if you make a, a, a nanostructured surface which has got features on one length scale and then features on a much finer length scale, you combine those two things to make a kind of hierarchical structure. This is actually really good at resisting water. So things like the lotus leaf, also things like uh, insect eyes and wings have these kind of structures on there. So they aggressively repel water and basically protect the, the plant or the, the insect. Ultimately, what we're hoping is that these nanotechnologies are enablers for completely new device form factors. So if you think about maybe flexible devices, bendable devices, and ultimately maybe even stretchable devices.